Hi, welcome to a 30 minute gentle yoga practice. My name is Kaylee. When you're ready, you can meet me on your mat. Go ahead and lie down onto your back. We'll start supine today. And take a moment to let yourself settle in. Bend your knees, plant your feet right underneath your knees. And then bring one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. You let the eyes soften or even close. Allow yourself to start to land on your mat and your body without forcing it. See if you can lengthen your breath just a little bit here. And with your hands connected to your torso, you might be able to feel the belly expand and the chest expand as you breathe in. Feel the belly soften and the ribs Relax as you breathe out. And take two more deep breaths like that. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the chest, maybe you even fill the collarbones with. And exhale, relax through the throat, the chest, and the belly. Just a three part breath. We'll do one more. Breathe in, let the belly fill, let the breath roll up into the sides of the ribs and the front of the chest and then all the way up to the throat. Exhale, throat, ribs, and belly. Bring your arms to a goal post or a T-shape. Walk your feet all the way together, walk the knees together, and then just tick tock your knees a few inches in each direction. So it might be a smaller range of motion than you're used to here. See if you can just notice how the hips are moving without coming all the way into big windshield wipers. So notice how the pelvis feels, let your lower back move away from the mat. And then from here, you can so notice how your body's responding. Maybe you increase the range of motion. Maybe you walk your feet a little wider apart. Maybe you slow the movement down a little bit more. So the goal of this practice is like an active recovery kind of experience. We don't need to go really fast. We don't need to press all the way to end ranges of motion. We just want to mobilize the joints, give the muscles, the connective tissue, a little gentle stretch. Come back to the center and then set up your figure four by bringing your right knee first into your chest. And feel the little stretch in the right side of your lower back. So you can hug your shin in as much or as little as you like. And then slide your right foot over the top of the left thigh. You let the right knee drift away from your body. Option to flex the right foot or to keep the foot relaxed. And then come back to an awareness of your breath as you tune into the sensations of this stretch. If you feel like you're nowhere near an end range of motion, you might reach down and catch the left hamstring or interlace your fingers around your left shin and hug your left leg in. Another thing you can do is start to walk your right ankle a little closer to the left hip crease. So just increasing that bend in the right knee and noticing how that feels in your body. And again, we're not necessarily looking for that end range of motion in your joints and your muscles, but just somewhere that feels like a, like a gentle challenge. Make sure that you can keep the jaw relaxed. And perhaps even invite a round or two of that three-part breath. Again, the three-part breath, it's dirga pranayama, breathing into the belly, the ribs, and the throat. Exhaling from the top down, the throat, and the ribs, and the belly. If you've got your left leg hugged in, go ahead and release your left foot down. Bring your right leg straight up toward the ceiling. 
And just pause with your ankle over your knee and your knee over your hip. Keep the right leg straight, slowly lower your right leg down, push into your left foot so that you've got some stabilization for your center. Let that right leg lengthen, point your right toes, reach your right arm back over your head. Perhaps you take a side stretch and breathe into it. And then slide your right foot down underneath your right knee as you re the right knee, right palm down to your side. Let's come into bridge just for a moment. Not the biggest bridge ever. Just lift your hips gently. And find a little opening in the front of the hips and the thighs. If you need a little bit more, feel free to extend your hips even more here before we come into that sequence on the left. Lowering down and eventually bringing your left knee into your chest, giving that knee as much or as little of a squeeze as feels good in the left side of your lower back. And then set up your figure four on this side. And it's just something to take note of if you notice the difference in the sensations in your left leg versus your right leg. You know, a lot of us have this, I, I certainly have this idea that my skeleton was like just perfectly symmetrical from right to left before I did a little bit more uh, training and learned like it's very common, if not uh, pretty much standard to have some asymmetry going on in the body. When you're ready, you can bring your right leg in if it feels like that would be a good way to intensify the stretch without straining. So we want to take note of differences, honor them, and then maybe do what we can to create balance. So what I mean by that is if one side of the body is a lot more open than the other, perhaps we want to work on stabilizing that side. If one side of the body is a lot tighter than the other, then we're just going to gently encourage a sense of spaciousness without getting aggressive or forceful. And take a few more rounds of breath here, maybe three part breath. One more moment in the stretch. Can you let go of tension around the mouth, the eyes? If you've got your right leg hugged in, gently set the right foot down underneath your right knee. Press into your right foot. Extend your left leg up toward the ceiling. Keep the left leg straight. Use your right foot to find some stability as you lower that left leg long out in front of you. Lift the left arm up over your head. Find that side body stretch. Point the left toes. Breathe in. Bend your left knee as you slide the left foot underneath the knee. Palms to your side. Come back into bridge. This time, maybe you lift a little higher. Lengthen the sides of the neck. And press the feet down and away from you to roll the weight back through the shoulders a bit. And then lower the hips down nice and easy. You can windshield wiper the knees a couple of rounds if that feels good. Meet me on your hands and your knees. So however you want to get there, no rush. Finding a tabletop position with your wrists under your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. Circle the hips a few times over the knees. Circle the shoulders a few times over the wrists. Press into the mat with your finger pads. So the heels of your hands are pushing down, but also the tips of your fingers, like making fingerprints on the mat. Switch the direction of the circles that you're making with your torso or your wrists and knees. Try and stay spacious in your lower back here. And then come through the center. Go ahead and arch your spine. Tailbone lifts toward the ceiling. Bend the elbows just a smidge. Pull your heart through your arms. Look forward. Or if it feels great in the neck, you can take your gaze up. Long breath in, finding cow. 
Exhale as you tuck your tailbone, press the hands down, round your spine, drawing your navel in toward your back. Let the shoulders move toward the ears. Come back to cow, inhale, really articulating this movement today. And then cat as you exhale. Take two more rounds moving with your breath. Notice how the hips feel, how the shoulders are moving today, how the ribs are moving. And the next time you finish up your cat, find a neutral spine. Tuck the toes under. Press into your hands, just as a transition, come into downward facing dog. You pedal out your down dog. I've got socks on, so I promise we're not gonna be hanging out here for a long time. You get a little stretch, the length of the calves. So the whole backside of the body really gets a stretch in downward facing dog. And then step your right foot between your thumbs, drop your left knee down onto the mat. And then lift the chest and the arms up, bringing the arms to like a W position or a goal post position. Take a nice long inhale here. As you exhale, bring the hands down, framing your front foot. Inhale, the right arm comes in. Exhale, the right hand comes down. Lift the chest, bend the arms, breathe in. So we're going to move back and forth like that. Exhale, frame the front foot. Lift the right arm, inhale. Lower the right hand, exhale. Lift the chest, breathe in. Lower the hands, breathe out last time. Inhale, right arm. Exhale it down. Inhale, lift the chest. Frame the front foot. This time we'll take our hamstring stretch. So start to send your hips back. You can send your right heel forward. You might melt your hips back toward your left heel. Tune into the sensations in the back of your right leg. And let that kind of help inform where you take this stretch. So oftentimes I stay lifted and that feels like a nice meaningful sensation in the back of the right hamstring. Today I actually feel like just taking it a little easier and melting the hips all the way down. You can always slide a block underneath your right hip or a couple firm pillows. Another nice option if I happen to have one, I would put a block underneath my forehead so that I could let the muscles in the back of the neck totally relax here. And tune into the sensation of the stretch and see if you can meet it by lengthening your pattern of breathing. So energetically breathe toward the sensation in your body. Creating a sense of spaciousness or connection. You move the breath just a little bit lower into your lungs here and you balloon the breath into the lower back. When you're ready, look forward, re-bend your front knee, start to walk the hands forward, tuck the back toes under, lift your left knee up, and then three-legged dog this time. Push the floor away with your hand, right leg lifts. Put a bend in your right knee so you find some external rotation in the right hip. Let that right heel get heavy. Maybe you're actively hugging the right heel toward your sacrum. Just stretch the right quad, so the front of the right thigh. Lengthening those muscles from the front of the right hip all the way down to the right kneecap. Re-extend your right leg long, breathe in. We're gonna set up half pigeon, bring your right knee forward. Your right ankle moves over toward the left. You can stay lifted, we call this swan pose. Kind of adjust through the hips and pelvis. This might be where you stay today or you can start to walk the arms forward and take a forward folded version. If this is super uncomfortable in your back knee, deer pose is another great option. You'll slide your left knee forward and then recline the chest over the right shin. We'll be here for just about 45 to 60 seconds, maybe five long breaths.
If you took the folded version of pigeon pose, you stretch to lift the head and the chest, walk the hands back. Tuck your left toes under, press into the mat with your palms and your left toes, and then just slide your right leg back behind you, lower down onto your belly and your chest, coming into stakes pose with your elbows underneath your shoulders. Feet are pretty wide, so you can experiment with whether you want to keep the feet close together or mats distance, or maybe even a little bit wider. And then maybe you even move the hips or the legs side to side to loosen up anything in the lower in the pelvis. Let yourself drop into some stillness. Option to soften your eyes to close all the way down or to rest your gaze, maybe at the tip of your nose or somewhere between your arms or thumbs. And we'll see if you can breathe into your belly here. So letting the inhale move down into the belly, pressing your body into the mat. It feels stiff to hold the head still here. Feel free to take some little half circles with the chin or nod your ear to your right shoulder and then your left ear to your left shoulder. So sometimes stillness feels really soothing for the nervous system and other times it can feel almost like rigidity. You wanna meet yourself where you're at. Take one more round of breath. And then as you exhale, either lower down all the way onto your belly and chest or gently press yourself into a child's pose. And feel the change in the muscle length in your lower back, your hips. If you're hearing a barking dog, I'm sorry. <laughs> When you're ready, press up to hands and knees. We're having some plumbing issues and I'm imagining the plumbers arrived. <laughs> Go ahead and rinse that out with a round or two of cat. Tuck the toes when you're ready and downward facing dog. Just for our transition to take that little mini flow on the other side. And step the left foot between the thumbs, drop your right knee down, and then lift the chest and the arms. Press into the balls of your feet to find that stability. Breathe in. Frame your front foot as you breathe out. Left arm lifts. Inhale, find a twist. Exhale, bring the left hand down. Lift the chest. Breathe in. Frame your foot as you breathe out. Lift the left arm nice and easy with the flow. Inhale, hand down, exhale. One more time like that. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, plant the hands. Left arm, breathe in. Hand down, breathe out. Lift the chest, last time, breath in. And then frame the foot. This time we set up your hamstring stretch. Straightening the left leg just until you feel a sensation that's interesting. I like to think of, we call it the Goldilocks principle. So something that's not too much, not too little. Feel free to add a block or a firm pillow underneath either the left hip or the forehead. And then maybe you move back toward that three-part breath, inhaling into the belly, letting the breath roll up through the sides of the ribs and to the throat or collarbones. Exhaling, relaxing the shoulders, the ribs, and the belly.
And when you're ready, look forward. You start to re-bend your front knee. Frame your front foot, tuck your back toes, lift your right knee, and then three-legged dog, left leg comes up. Put a bend in your left knee, find some space in the front of the left hip and thigh as you hug your left heel toward your low back. You might even point the left toes and see if that increases that line of energy, that fascial line in the front of the left leg. Break extend your leg on an in-breath and then set up your pigeon pose or deer is always another option here. And keeping the chest lifted just for a moment, even if you're planning on taking sleeping swan or folded pigeon to let your hips and your pelvis kind of adjust. And then as you settle in, Whichever version of this stretch you landed in, I'm going to offer a paced breath. It'll be an even inhale and an even exhale. I'll cue a couple rounds. We'll aim for five rounds with a five count pace. So just take a normal breath to start. Exhale completely. Take a breath in for five, four, three. Two, one, exhale for five, four, three, two, one, inhale, slow five, four, three, two, one, exhale, slow five, four, three, two, one, take three more rounds like that on your own. And when you're ready to come out of pigeon, slowly lift your chest. This time we're just going to shift the weight to the left, bring your right leg around. Bend your knees, hook the back of your knees with your hands. And then round your spine and take a slow roll out onto the back. So think about creating cat in your back and then slowly, maybe bone by bone, see if you can lengthen every space between the vertebra as you lower down. Once your shoulders land, reach your arms over your head, take a breath in, and then let it go. Bring your arms to your side. Windshield wiper the knees really slowly, letting go of anything that's still holding on in your hips or your pelvis. We're gonna set up for a progressive muscle relaxation guided version of Shavasana. If you want to take your own Shavasana, you can always um, turn off the video or log out. Otherwise, start to settle in with your legs long and adjust and shift until your body settles. So progressive muscle relaxation, we're going to squeeze different parts of the body. Take a big breath in, and then as you exhale, you'll relax those body parts. We'll start with the feet. So curl your toes in. Maybe even lift the heels a little bit because you're squeezing the feet so firm here. Squeeze as hard as you can without hurting yourself. Take a breath in. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale and relax the feet completely. All right, walk the heels a little closer together. Now you're going to flex the feet, push the heels down, toes pull toward your shins, squeeze the legs entirely, squeeze your glutes. Squeeze the legs as much as you can without hurting yourself. So you might even feel your legs kind of lifting up off of the mat. Take a breath in. Exhale and let it go. Let the feet walk open and the legs separate again. Bring your awareness into your hands, make fists with your hands, squeezing your fingers in, 
bend your elbows and then push the elbows into the mat, look right next to your body, squeeze elbows towards your ribs. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Let the shoulders hunch up toward the ears. Take a breath in. And then relax it completely. Let your arms rest easy at your side. And just notice the residual sensations in your body. And let yourself linger on your mat. Just for another minute here before we end the practice together. When you're ready to move on, you can gently nod your head side to side. Maybe circle your ankles or your wrists. Take your time to meet me in a seat. No rush to get there. Let's take a big cleansing breath. Inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, let it go. Thank you for being here. Thank you for practicing. It's good to have you, Brian. Sorry about my dog. <laughs> I didn't even hear your dog, so you oh, no need to apologize. Oh, great. That's good. I didn't ruin a recording. All right. <laughs> well, take care. I hope to see you soon. Yeah, you too. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye, Brian.